Hello, everyone. Um, we are here and talking about co-working today. So welcome to Friday. I have called this Finance Friday, but I'm pretty sure I need help naming it because CPA shouldn't be allowed to name things. <laughs> uh, creativity is usually not our strong suit, so we're gonna work on that one. <laughs> but um, I'm excited today because I have Tracy Warren here of InSpark Coworking, and we're gonna talk about co-working and the cost of co-working, and then what it looks like to actually own a co-working space, what it looks like to go to a co-working space, and when it might work for you, for your business. And um, so we're both in entrepreneurial spaces. You know, I work with small business owners. You have, you're surrounded, Tracy, by small businesses all the time. So this idea of co-working comes up a lot, and specifically for you. So go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your business. Well, I'm Tracy Warren, and um, my company is InSpark Coworking, and we've been open, we opened April 2017, which kind of blows my mind that it's been over two years, but um, we have a wide variety of people who work from the space, um, but we've got a couple of distinct themes. We have lots of creatives. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's marketing people or brand designers or SEO, they're kind of all in the same space and yet hardly overlap, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And then we have a lot of um, men who are coders. Oh, interesting. Because it's a great way to, like you have your computer and you can just do your thing. Yeah. Um, so that has kind of become our mix. And obviously there's um, exceptions to that. And there are financial people here who aren't creative, but well, actually creative, but they don't necessarily fit the mold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I think it seems like there's lots of different types of people that could use a co-working space. So what what is co-working for the people who don't know? Maybe you can explain it. Well, boy, I tell you, this is mm -hmm. this is one of the hard, biggest challenges, honestly, is. Mm -hmm. Um, sh explaining what co-working is. So for InSpark, co-working is shared workspace for entrepreneurs, freelancers, and remote workers. Mm -hmm. um, we really, our space is open concept, most of it. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's perfect. It's a cost effective for most small business owners to not have an office mm -hmm. that they have to pay for on a regular basis. So shared workspace, it's like Starbucks, only without all the other noisy people and a uh, coffee grinder going all the time. Right. And the, the fact that you could actually stay there for a long time if you wanted to. Like there's always that, you know, you have the people who hang out at the coffee shop for like six hours and they're only buying two cups of coffee while they're there. Right, and the owners are like, "Can you please just make some space for everybody else?" That would be yes, great. <laughs> and it's interesting because a lot of Starbucks, as an example, they're remodeling and they're shifting up their seating, and like it has become less seating, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think the days of oh, <laughs> Nikki says, and they play loud music at Starbucks. <laughs> um, yeah, they do, and yeah. there's no escaping the loud music. Like you can, I remember before I had this, I would meet people, and that's like, okay, where are the speakers mm -hmm. so that we can sit and actually have a conversation? Even in real life, it was hard. Absolutely. And I mean, also there's just that security piece. Like mm -hmm. when I'm sitting in Starbucks, I always kind of have my hand on my purse or, you know, you, you, you position it. So, I mean, and that's in Seattle. I don't know if that's everywhere, yeah. but you know, you're always kind of thinking, you know, you can't just get up from your space, go to the bathroom and come back. You have to pack it all up, go to the bathroom, do that thing. Like there's just, you know, when you camp out somewhere for a long time. So this, so co-working gives place that people a place to go to actually do business in a, a way that 
you know, you would normally do in an office. Right. And it also allows, I think most co-working spaces allow you to bring guests in so that you could actually meet someone in a professional location rather than, you know, either inviting someone over to your house if you work from home or trying to like find somewhere. And then maybe the coffee shop doesn't actually have a seat open or, you know, for whatever is power power <laughs> or you know maybe you're even having a little bit of a sensitive conversation with someone like when i'm talking about accounting with someone this is oh. not something that i want to sit in a starbucks and go through someone's p l with them like that's just <laughs> um like i wouldn't even have a zoom call and do that at a starbucks so <laughs> that's a, a definitely something to consider um but Anyway, so co-working fills a lot of different spaces, it sounds like. Like it fits the need for a lot of different people at different times. Um, what would you say to someone who's trying to decide whether to go out and try to find maybe a single workspace and rent it and go through a traditional lease versus someone who is looking at maybe doing a co-working thing instead? Well, I think it really depends on what you need, right? Mm -hmm. If you are a business coach and you are going to be talking live with people all day long, then a traditional office is going to be a better fit for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what I hadn't even considered, so right across the street from us, I mean, kind of really close to us is a office suite. So they have mm -hmm. 170 offices. And so, yes, rent is $600, which is like, okay, rent is $600. But then they don't have air conditioning. You have to buy your own coffee. Uh -huh. You have to buy your own internet, which internet. is probably pretty equal to what I pay here. And yeah. So your $600 office is all of a sudden $1,000 a month. Yeah. And you're yeah. working by yourself. And for some people, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, the low barrier to entry at co-working is is really a great option for almost anyone mm -hmm. who doesn't talk to clients all day and doesn't talk on the phone all day. Like this would not be a great place for salespeople um, yeah. who are smiling and dialing, right? Or mm -hmm. uh, we actually, one of our first members was a recruiter and it was so funny because by the time he moved out, we had all kind of memorized his pitch. <laughs> Like, oh wait, now he's gonna say that thing. And yeah, like knowing that, and it was great because it was in a time when we were just starting out and so it wasn't mm -hmm. super busy. Um, but now if a recruiter were to come in, it it's not a, gonna be a good fit. Yeah, yeah. And you can say that as a business owner, like, hey, this is probably not the best place for mm -hmm. you. You're you're keeping you're trying to like make sure your community is happy to work there. Absolutely. That's part of your your thing too, is you're like, is this person gonna be a good fit or not? Not just mm -hmm. who's gonna pay me money to come and work here. It's it's much For bigger. sure. Yeah. So um kind of on that on that subject of of going out and like leasing a space. So if I if because I have looked at this before because I'm in this little room in my house right now because this is the easiest place for me to work right now. But when I was looking at potentially finding a space, when you look at, even if you could just find a single office, say you could find a single office, you are talking about your $600 a month, and this is in Seattle, obviously that's gonna range really widely no matter where you are. Oh yeah. But the biggest thing is that landlords are going to want to sign a lease, and a lease is what ties you into a longer term commitment. And the shortest lease you're probably ever gonna see in a commercial space is a year. And that's probably pretty rare. Would you yeah. agree? Oh, yes. Is that what you see? Yeah. Okay. And that's a huge, it can be a really big risk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I mean, even when, because I signed a three-year lease here originally, mm -hmm. that was terrifying. I had never signed a three-year anything. <laughs> and then a couple of months ago, we um, redid the lease and I signed another three years. So. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, let me sign a seven year. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. I look around here. <laughs> it's actually funny. I look around here and go, oh my gosh, if I ever had to move, I have so much furniture. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much stuff in here. It's kind yeah. of mind boggling. So I tell the landlord, like, I'm never moving out. It's it's just yeah. I'm never moving out. Yeah. Because no. 
Yeah. You well, are you're a person too, because you are, you're in an area where it's not like you have a lot of, well, you are the only co-working space in Snohomish County. Is that yes. still correct? It is still correct. There okay. are, um, there are about 85 in King County. Mm -hmm. Um, and so far one here. Now there are some other, um, services that are up here in Snohomish County. If you are a startup, um, or especially if you're in the product space, product creation oh, space, interesting. there's a place in Everett called the lab. Um, oh, they are not open full time. I think it's like 10 to three. I thought they were going to be co-working until the, um, the, one of the founders called me and said, Hey, are you still taking referrals? I was like, Oh yeah, I thought you did co-working, but they did not. Um, there's Pretty another gentleman who bought a building in Everett. Mm -hmm. Um, I know he was planning on opening in the spring. Um, and that hasn't happened. So, mm -hmm. um, and Arlington, so I guess, oh, well, wow. so Arlington, they, what it really is, is they call it the Stilly Collective and it's the, um, it's where the chamber is, but they kind of have a little bit of co-working. So, oh, so maybe wow. I shouldn't say um, that I'm the only. So. You're the first. <laughs> I am the first. Well, okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. Take that. That's a good one. Um, okay, great. Like, uh, and I mean, maybe give people a little bit of an idea of what what does it cost to co-work and and can you do it just a little bit at a time or can you be full-time like if you're really trying to replace a you know renting an office space what does that look like well actually so when we first opened i did a lot of research into the models of pricing and for co-working it's all over the place yeah um there are some places that like you get this many day it's too complicated and I didn't want it to be complicated because that's not my skill set. Yeah. Um, and we started out, it was five days a month was part time. Mm -hmm. And then I registered on, there's all these third party, um, websites that where I can list. And so I listed my space at five days a month and they translated it to 40 hours a month. And then when I put it out there, 40 hours a month, then people started to bite. Hmm. Um, it really does translate into one day a week. Um, mm -hmm. That's how a lot of people use it. But for $150 to spend 40 hours a week, I'm complete. I've completely lost your first question at this point. But yeah. um, what does the price kind of variance look? Oh, like right. So it's $150 for part time, and mm -hmm. full time is 300. Mm -hmm. um, and at full time, you get four hours in the conference room a month. So oh. it's perfect for, um, it's kind of a wash actually, like having the full time membership, um, is like paying for the part time and paying for four hours of conference room space. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, there's something way more powerful about being a full time member because you see everyone who comes mm -hmm. and, um, build those relationships and that kind of thing. Um, as, far as co-working around the area, um, geez, like you said about commercial offices, how they can range. Mm -hmm. um, I think part-time, well, there's a place in Greenwood that they do $35 or $30 for a day, or they do, do $6 an hour. Hmm. So you can pay as much or as little as you want. Um, but it's pretty, if you want a part-time space, you're probably going to be paying anywhere from 150 to three-ish. And that's just for part-time. Yeah. And full-time yeah. is, I mean, in Seattle is, is crazy. Very expensive. But, yeah. but co-working is a great option for startups, for teams who don't want to sign that lease. Yeah. Cause they can get a shorter term option at a co-working space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen, I think I went online and looked for a client one time, um, what leases look or what 
a co-working space looked like, I think, at um, WeWork. And they had 10 team members. And it was going to oh. be like $10,000 a month or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I mean, when you go to look at some of these commercial leases, I mean, they do get really big. But what the reason that they price it so astronomically is because they they have taken on the liability of that long term lease. And then these people who only come in and maybe only need it for three months, right? right they're gonna charge you that higher rate, right? Um, and, you know, and that that could be really working well for a group that's growing extremely fast, and they don't want to commit to a long term lease because they might be expecting their team to double, triple, quadruple in the next three years. So in those kind of situations, it's like, well, you know, that might be just the cost of doing business at this point in time. And then, you know, at a certain point in time, you start to look at the cost of long-term leases. But I think most of our kind of, you know, our groups of people that we're talking to most of the time are probably looking in the smaller teams or right. either just they're solopreneurs and they're kind of doing their own thing. Um, I use co-working spaces to, to meet with my team member. So I have a local team member here. And so we've been able to meet directly. And it's really nice because I don't want to have to keep my house clean all the time and like me, you know, and, or, you know, even having somebody come into your personal space, if you work from home a lot, having that kind of crosses a border of like, are we there yet for you to come into my house? Yeah. To have kind of a nice neutral space and also kind of just to be around other people and, you know, be a part of something bigger than yourself is really Absolutely. nice. So I talk a lot about like, four of the primary benefits of co-working, at least here, and because I can't speak to what other, how other spaces mm -hmm. are, is um, it, uh, it decreases distraction. And a lot of people are like, wait a minute, what? There's all sorts of people around here. Um, somebody actually told me the other day, like, I don't think I would get any work done here. And I remind, I'm, remind people all the time, we're all working. Mm -hmm. This is not mm -hmm. social hour. This is we're working now. Mm -hmm. There could be the occasional like, hey, can I run an idea by you? Can you read something for me? But we're working. So less distraction, um, greater productivity. Mm -hmm. Like that is the number one pe thing people say the first time they come here is I can't believe how much I got done. Mm -hmm. um, creativity, just getting out of your own space mm -hmm. um, can provide and that's what I love about more and more creatives joining this space because it just it amps up the energy mm -hmm. of the creativity and then community right like having people that I can refer to or people as resources and this I didn't even think of until just now but the fifth super big benefit is a line between home and work yeah um and it's not about work-life balance because i'm that's not what i talk about but <laughs> i this is this is where i work yeah and it's those snow days i'm like i don't care i'm getting the inspark <laughs> and thankfully i drive a subaru and i can drive really slow and <laughs> but but i'm not set up to work from home mm -hmm. and when i worked from home before I worked from 8 a.m. until I went to bed mm -hmm. with a thousand distractions in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so those, um, and, and what's challenging is those are things that are hard to put a price tag on. Mm -hmm. But I see so many people like networking themselves to death when, um, for me, business is about building relationships and if I'm going to five networking events a week, I'm not building relationships. I'm passing out business cards. Mm -hmm. And I love that I have a space where I can actually build relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, That's you know, when someone new comes in as a member, we're like, we all want to know who the new person is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who are you? What do you do? I've never met you before, which yeah. I that happening like my heart goes pitter pat because that's <laughs> that's when those when 
when having a business is a struggle, mm -hmm. sometimes I can just sit here and watch people who did not know one another mm -hmm. doing this together, having conversations, you know, somebody's cat is missing and we're check, like checking in on her. And it like, I just like get, yeah, pitter pat. My heart goes pitter pat. Makes me yeah. so happy. Well, and I think that that is actually one of the, isn't that one of the biggest struggles for entrepreneur is loneliness and depression? Like 100%. Because I think, you know, we get so kind of in our own heads. We also, when you are isolated and by yourself for so long, you start to think that you are the only person that is experiencing this same issue or you are the only person who could ever understand like your certain, you know, your struggles. And when you get into a community of other people, and this goes for, you know, larger networking groups and things like that, Absolutely. having any sort of community that you're getting out of that, but then also just physically moving yourself to a different place with a different energy can be, um, you know, an amazing thing for your business and then even just for your mental health. So yeah, absolutely. I re somebody recently was here and she said, we were talking about that whole isolation thing. And what she said is, it just becomes so normal mm -hmm. that we don't see a different way. Like, oh, this is just the way it is. I work from home and I do laundry and, uh, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, it's just normal. Mm -hmm. And I don't know any other way to do it. And I will also say some people who work from home can do it brilliantly. Mm -hmm. That's just not me. Yeah. Um, would I, you yeah. would you say that um, co working is for extroverts? Um, I would say that if I didn't have introvert members. Yeah. So you you have um, introvert members that are thriving in a co working environment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it we definitely attract more of the extrovert. Mm -hmm. um, there's been some introverts and I just want to, I, it is my goal as a massive extrovert to respect their introvert introversion. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, a young man here who he's an employee for a company. He's super quiet, but I have found little tiny ways to, like, hey, thanks for making that extra pot of coffee. Or, but so making him feel like part of the community and honoring, mm -hmm. honoring his, honoring him. Mm -hmm. um, and it was cool. We do a potluck once a month, and he came to the potluck this week. And it was like, it was so great to just chat for a few minutes um, because I do. There is power in connecting with everyone here. Mm -hmm. um, I've been hearing some horror stories about co-working spaces. Oh, really? And um, and then when I hear them, I'm like, oh, that would never happen here because mm -hmm. it it just wouldn't happen here. Um, so, oh yeah, someone told me a story this morning. There was a co-working space where the owner got sick and was in the hospital, and when she got out of the hospital and got back. Um, like all of the televisions were stolen. And I'm like, oh, oh, my gosh. Gosh. <laughs> she has, she has, there's cameras and she knew who it was, but oh I'm my like, God. that is crazy. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So it's much more than just a space to come in and work because what you're yeah. saying is that it's, it's much bigger than just that piece. And I, and I think that probably speaks to like, if you're looking for a co-working space, what do you really want? Do you want community or do you want just the place that you can be an anonymous space and doesn't have that whole thing kind of built up? I think most people, most co-working spaces try to have the community built and then maybe some are a little more successful at it than others. But I mean, probably there's certain places that fit what you're looking for and maybe better than others. So well, and um, I had this idea recently, like, oh, you know what? There are people who are really, they're really good at focusing. And there's other people who aren't as good at focusing, even when they're here. And so I moved some tables to the edges where you're facing the wall. Mm -hmm. So because if you're facing the wall and you're working, 
pretty good chance you're not going to get interrupted. Yeah. And that, that was the intent is mm -hmm. let's create some spaces where people can just heads down. Um, and I also made some little signs that are kind of funny, like, please don't interrupt me right now. I'm on a deadline or mm -hmm. I'm in a group or because as we've grown, um, like when we were smaller, the boundary issue didn't really come up. And as we grow, <laughs> it's becoming like, oh, okay, we need to create some boundaries here. And so uh -huh. making little mm -hmm. signs are fun, um, which plays to my personality, but mm -hmm. yeah. But also respects the people who are there. Mm -hmm. so. Awesome. Really um, right? That's the hardest, like me having boundaries for me Mm -hmm. is the hardest thing here because I love to connect. Mm -hmm. So I could, we call it work avoiding. <laughs> um, but I heard a podcast the other day. She talked about productive procrastination. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you need to get, stop doing what you're doing and do something completely different. Mm -hmm. But um, that, yeah, yesterday I organized my pens because dang it, the Sharpies have to be with the Sharpies. <laughs> and the expo pens need to be, yeah, I was, I'm like, I'm work avoiding and I'm totally okay with it. Like give myself some grace, but yeah. Um, yeah. You just gotta do what you gotta do. I gotta do it. <laughs> uh, can I ask you some questions about what it's like to own a co-working space? Oh yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't have any like laid out or anything like that, okay. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you decided to open this kind of business. I and did. What was your initial thinking as, and maybe what your expectation was when you first, oh. you know, first signed that lease and you took that big step? Like, what were you thinking it was going to look like? Um. So what I thought would happen is that I already have a pretty solid community and I thought, that like I'm going to open and they're going to join. Yeah. Um, what I know now is you do it the other way around. You build a co-working community first and mm. then you open a space. So wow. if I had to do it over um, or when I open another in spark, which is absolutely the plan, we will do mm -hmm. it. We'll do it differently. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the growth has been way slower than I anticipated. And part of that was or is the fact that when I would go to networking things in this area, like the chamber or other more traditional networking, I would say I'm opening a co-working space and they had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah. yeah. And so the awareness was a huge issue. Mm -hmm. And not that we've overcome that. But um, word is getting out. In fact, I'm going to brainstorm with my husband this weekend. I want to start a campaign called um, something about go ahead, talk about me behind my back. <laughs> well, because you told me, right, in the Edmonds Moms group, yeah. there were yeah. a bunch of people. I was like, you know, talk about me behind my back is like it's clever, it's unique, and it will get people's attention. Yeah. But to be thanking those people who are saying nice things about me, um, like that, like in Edmund's Moms, I'm not in that group. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have known about it if you hadn't told me. Yeah. Um, but I want more people talking about me behind my back. Yeah. And that specifically, um, I'm in a mom's group for the town that we're moving to. And uh, somebody posted on there saying, hey, I'm looking for some place to kind of work for a couple hours, but, you know, which coffee shops or local places can I go to that are good for working? And, you know, people had kind of put a couple uh, coffee shops in there, but, you know, I was looking through and I'm like, that place is always busy, that place is always busy, that place is always busy. And then about three or four people posted about InSpark. So I told you about it because I was like, hey, people are talking. And that, because Edmonds is really close to where your co-working yeah. space is. It's kind of like a prime um, location, I guess, if somebody were looking to find find a co-working space. So, yeah, I, I that makes a lot of sense. So if you were to, you know, when you're thinking about opening another one, what would you think looking at 
like that community, building that community first would look like? I mean, are you talking about meetups or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's the way. Um, so about a year after I opened, there's a gal who's run a co-working space in Colorado. Um, she wrote a book called The Co-Working Launch Sequence or something. I never get the name of her book right. Mm -hmm. And in there, she talks about building this community. So you create a meetup where you, you're like, okay, we're going to meet at this coffee shop and we're going to co-work for four hours or whatever. And then they're going to come back next week. And so what happens is they're naturally building the community. Mm -hmm. And then there comes a point when it's like, okay, I'm thinking about, a, or maybe I don't even know when you tell them, but like, are you ready to buy into this? Mm -hmm. um, that was something, thankfully, I did at the beginning. I reached out to a handful of people and said, hey, I'm opening this, this co-working space. Um, would you be interested in buying your whole year membership up front? Mm -hmm. And um, I had a few people do that and like the capital up front is, is ridiculous. Okay. Let's talk about that for a second. Cause obviously now we're talking about capital and cash. And oh, I get okay. excited. <laughs> um, so if you want to talk a little bit about it, but like, okay, capital, what does that mean? That's the initial investment of getting a business up and running right. and you have, well, did you have to put, you had to probably put a deposit down on your space. Yep. You had incredible amounts of furniture to buy. Office yep. furniture is not cheap not for cheap. some reason, even though it's made from some of the cheapest materials in the world, yep. it is not cheap. You have, what else? I mean, you probably had in, like actual build outs of, um, did you do Thank any you in the building paid for all the tenant improvements. Okay. That's fantastic. Which you can negotiate oh, into a lease. I would never have been able to open if I had to pay for that. Oh yeah. Because I mean, yeah. And we can talk a little bit about tenant improvements. Like those usually depending on the landlord and what's going on, those usually can be rolled into a lease to where either you can get like a rent abatement for a certain amount of time or right. they can, um, you know, maybe say, Hey, we'll do this, but you need to sign an extra year or whatever it might be. So I'm not, I don't, I don't want you to have to say what your lease terms were, but, <laughs> but that, that's a part of, of that, that rent analysis. abatement. So that's definitely, if somebody wants to start a co-working space, mm -hmm. especially if the space has been empty for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a space in Edmonds on the waterfront that's, available mm -hmm. and my friend was like gosh i wonder if i could start a, a co-working space there or an office there i'm like okay first of all you can start an inspark there let's partner <laughs> but we started looking at how much the rent would be and um and i said and if you're signing a lease like that you're gonna want like give me three months free at the beginning so that i can ramp up yeah um and i would also say that one of the the most important thing when you open a co-working space or you're signing a lease or whatever is your landlord has to get it mm -hmm. and they have to like they have to get it mm -hmm. because without my landlord i would have been out of business a year ago because mm -hmm. it didn't grow as fast as i needed to mm -hmm. and but he believes in what we're doing and um, I just, I hear when anyone talks about renting a space for anything and they say, well, the landlord, I'm like, run, because your mm -hmm. landlord can make or break your business because they can make it really hard mm -hmm. to do business. Um, I just heard this morning about a, a co-working space on the east side where the building is owned by some international company Mm -hmm. And they keep asking the space to do things that are against the law here, but they're outside of the country. So they don't get it. And they're making it very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we first opened going back to furniture, I started out by renting my furniture. Oh, wow. Okay. Which means cause which meant I had a really nice furniture and it was really expensive. Um, but my thought process at the time was I really wanted, 
I wanted it to match and be cohesive. Mm -hmm. um, match is a loose term, but, and I also thought if I rent it first, then I don't have to have $20,000 up front. Mm. Um, now I've learned about some great resources, especially in this area. And I would imagine in other areas as well, like the University of Washington has a surplus store. Oh. So when their teachers or their staff or whoever are clearing out their offices or they're buying new furniture, they, they sell it all. Mm. And I have gotten, like, I have these two round tables in the kitchen that I paid five bucks a piece for. Wow. I got, I got a Herman Miller conference room table for 80 bucks. Wow. And conference tables, just to give you some reference, oh. probably start at what, 2000 typically? They're, they're a lot. And, and I have really nice. I've and also Miller, well, I've also lucked out. There was a guy I met, or uh, uh, I found on Craigslist, and he had these. He had these really tall chairs, and I bought them for five dollars a piece because he was trying to clear out his um, storage space. And I had a furniture person in here. He's like, "Those chairs are like five hundred dollars new." Wow. And then someone else just gifted me a bunch of chairs a couple weeks ago. And I looked them up. I'm like, wow, those are $300 new. It's like, okay. Yeah. But I kind of, I made some really thrifty scores mm -hmm. um, and have replaced over the time. And there's tables that are here now that I don't love. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just looking, I, I still want some, some, I don't want a whole bunch of tables that don't match. Mm -hmm. um, so if I can find two rectangle tables that match, then mm -hmm. I will replace some of the square tables. Yeah. But yeah, it's, and, and I rearrange the furniture all the time. Yeah. Um, well, and I mean, that might be a work avoidance technique as well. <laughs> Well, I mean, to come up with that, you know, if you start talking about 500 per chair, 300 per chair, you know, $1,000 per table, $1,000 for this table, you know, desks are not cheap either, you know, if you're actually having, because you also have cubicles in your space, and those right. cubicle walls are ridiculously expensive. And I got those <laughs> on, I never planned on having cubicles, uh -huh. um, but I found them on Craigslist for $300, mm -hmm. and if I... I mean, now I would love to take those down because what I'm finding is um, they're really, they're quite big. Mm -hmm. And the people who are using them um, are mostly coders. And so they have this much space. I'm in the camera. Yeah. And yeah. So the, the cubicles could be half size and mm -hmm. Um, would still serve the people using them, but, um, but now, now you know that. Now like, I know. Now you have that piece of information, and you didn't go and spend all your initial capital oh on desks that you did not have the experience enough to know exactly what you would buy now if you were to buy new. And yeah. so now you can make a more informed decision if you do ever decide to purchase something different. And then. Right. You know, and I love the idea of things not just being thrown into the dumpster and being able to be reused a few times because the truth is these larger organizations just wholesale say, we're redesigning the office and they'll get rid of perfectly good furniture yep. just to have a refresh or do something different interior wise. So office furniture, there's a big market for aftermarket or after, you know, I, I guess, yeah, secondhand office furniture even well, though it could be an incredible condition. I look on Craigslist and the search term, well, I haven't done this in a while, but the search term I would use is um, office closing. Mm -hmm. um, because I can find some some amazing, like they're just trying to clear out their space. Yeah, and they want it done fast. <laughs> yes, they do, because they're moving, yeah, like you said, they're moving in new furniture. Um, but I've had, like I have a treadmill desk, Mm -hmm. um those are those are really expensive and wow. someone gifted it to me wow. um i just had to pay for someone to move it but it's awesome to have it here mm -hmm. and um yeah it, it it 
I know there's a lot of co-working spaces that just do the Ikea thing. Like I would rather, I would rather eat glass than put together a piece of Ikea furniture. I was trying to think of a good analogy. Like, putting together furniture is not my jam at yeah. all. Yeah. And um, I did buy two little tables, like the one that I'm working on right now. And I had to put those together, but it was extremely easy. Yeah. yeah. I like that. <laughs> and I, you know, I want people to be comfortable. Yeah. I, I see some co-working spaces, they have like hard plastic chairs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how can that be, com how can that be comfortable? But it's all for the Instagram picture. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, like, yeah. But it looks beautiful, so sure that's what it's about. Not about your productivity during the day when you're having to like move around and like get up constantly or whatever. <laughs> I think that we're gonna have to close it down because I think we are having um, broadcast issues. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great Friday.